Okay, good day is FY here. So today we're going to learn how to use the partial derivative and the chain rule in the questions of applications. Okay, so you try to relate the thing that we have learned in the previous uh, video. Okay, that is the chain rule and the knowledge that you have regards the partial derivative. Okay, and look at this, this question. So they're going to apply here. Okay, so uh, in this question, they are talking about you have a cylinder. You have a cylinder. It actually increases. Okay, the radius of the cylinder is actually increases uh, at the rate of 0 0.2. It's talking about the radius. Okay, so it means that this is actually referred to the dr dt. The radius, the r stands for the radius. So you have your first information that is dr dt. Increases when we say increases, that is means that it's actually in the positive value. So we have 0 0.2 positive a centimeter per second. All right, okay. Then we have the second information is here. Okay, that it says that uh, the height decreases at the rate. Uh, the height we use the h to denote the uh, height, and the rate of the high is actually equal to d h d t so your d h d t that is uh in term of negative because it says decreases okay decreases you have a negative 0 0.5 okay you have a decreases this increases okay so look at the things that we require to find in this question you say find the rate at which the volume is changing. So we're talking about the change of the volume, okay? The rate of change of the volume that is basically referred to uh, dv. The v stands for the volume dv. So we ask you to find the dv dt when your r is 8 and your h is actually 12. Alright, okay, that is what we have. Okay, so uh, we are talking about cylinder. If we are talking about cylinder, we have the formula for the cylinder. Okay, we are talking about cylinder. And it's actually related to the volume. We are interested to know the volume, uh, the change of the volume of this cylinder. So we're going to use the formula of the volume. Okay, the formula for the volume for cylinder that is pi r squared. H. So if you look at this, okay, first of all, please analyze first. Please analyze first the things that we're going to use in the chain later. So if you look at this formula, so we're going to draw the tree diagram, okay? We're going to draw the tree diagram. So your formula of V, you are having two variables. The first variable that is R. And the second variable that you can see that is h. Okay, so this tree diagram tells you that you have two variables, so you will use the partial. So you have del v del r, and this is del v del h. Okay, let's just go further. Okay, how about the r? Okay, uh, in this question, so they did not give you an equation regards the r equals to um what, but you can see that we have dr dt. It means that actually your r is changing according to the time. So inside the r, inside the r actually is related to is actually related to the time. So that's why in here you can think of you have one component. Uh, the r actually has one component t. Okay. So same thing happened to h. Going to the questions does not give you anything related to the t and equation of h related to t but you can see here we have dhdt so we know that actually the h has you has the you have the t component okay you have the t component because the h is actually changing according to the time so you have the t component okay so when you have a t component means that you going to uh, each of them have a T component, so you will have um, in here is one component, so you're going to use a DRDT and this DHDT. 
Okay, if you look at here, the thing that we are interested to find is B, 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 T. So we're going to begin from here. And you're going to end with this two, two, no, okay, that is ending with T, okay. I'm not going to write the chain reverse because I know that I have to multiply all the things, the partial derivative along the branch. So the first thing I'm going to do that is I'm going to find what is the partial derivative first before I write the chain, okay. So let, let's just find out what is del V del R first. So del V del R is you can get from here, so you have del V, del R here. So means that you are treating the H as constant, you're going to treat the H as constant. So you differentiate with respect to R, you differentiate this one only, you have 2 pi R H. Okay, so we have 2 pi R H. Okay, then the next we're looking for del V, Del H. Okay, del V del H that is you treating, you treating the R as constant, treating the R as constant. So you differentiate this. So if you differentiate that H, so you have pi R squared. Okay, okay. to settle on the first two derivative, okay, they will go for this. So they ask you, uh, uh, this is basically you don't have to find because it's actually information has been given. There is this one, drdt, and it's, uh, then we have the dhdt here. Okay, so now go to the questions. We need to simplify this dvdt. So this dvdt is actually you can get from the chain rule. Okay, so you look at the tree diagram. The tree diagram tells you that basically you have to multiply this the partial derivative along the branch. So the first is give us del v del r dot v r d t. Let's read another branch that is here. That is here. So you have del v del h multiply v d h d t. Okay, so we have del v del h multiply v d h d t. Okay, we do the substitution, so um, this actually gives you 2 pi r h multiply with the r dt that is 0 0.2. Okay, d v d h that is pi r squared uh, with the d h dt that is minus 0 0.5. Okay, let us simplify it and this actually gives you 0 0.4 pi r h. And it's negative 0 0.5 pi r squared. Alright, okay. So that is the general, general formula of DVT, okay? But we have to go to specific because it's, it says that <coughs> you need to find out the specific value of DVT when r equal to 8 and h equal to 12. Okay, so let's just see what happens when you have a specific value when you have r is 8. And h is actually 12. Okay, this is do the substitutions into the general formula of the dvdt. So you have 0 0.4 pi r, the r is 8, and the h is actually 12. 0 0.5 pi r is 8 squared. Okay, so this one you multiply. If you multiply, you will have 38.4 pi minus read, um, 32 pi, and the result is 6.4 pi. Okay, you can keep your answer in terms of pi, or you can transfer it uh, to the decimal number. You multiply with the pi, okay? So that is actually give you... 20.1062 okay and remember okay every time when you have uh, written the final answer you have to return the unit also so the unit for the volume that is cm cube okay the time is actually the second so it's per second Okay, let's look at the uh, second example. Okay, so the second example uh, said that you have two straight roots that is intersect at right angle. Okay, let's just draw, uh, draw it out. 
So we have two roots. Okay, that is intersect at right angle. Okay, so you have intersect. So you have intersection here. Okay, and then you have a car A that is moving on on one of the road approach the intersection. So we have car A. Uh, so you have a car A here. So this car A is moving towards approaching approaches to the intersections. Okay, approach to the intersections at 25 kilometer per hour. Okay. Um let, let it, it let's just write it uh in terms of mathematical way. So let's let the x become the distance between the car A and intersection. So this is x here. Okay, so now this twenty-five kilometer it approaches to the intersections, huh? so it approaches to the intersections, it's actually talking about dx dt. But this dx dt, dx dt, that is in terms of negative because uh, when the car is actually approach, approaches to the intersections, the distance between the car and the in intersection it will, it will be it will be narrow though. It will be narrow, narrow. Okay, because uh, if the distance become narrow and narrow because it will be a more approach to uh more approach to intersection itself. So it's actually in terms of negative. Okay, because the distance becomes short uh becomes shorter. Then let's look at the car, the next information we have car B. So the car B is moving on another road. Okay, so we have a car B here. So let's say we have a car B. Okay, the car B will travel here. So, okay, and it says that uh, able to approach the intersections uh, at 30 km per hour. Okay, so same thing, we, we try to write it mathematically. So we let the Y become the distance between uh, okay between the car B and intersection. So this one become your Y okay by the time going eh, because uh, it actually approaches approaches to the intersections so the distance will become narrow or the become shorter so your dy dt will be in terms of negative okay so this is your dy dt this so this is in terms of negative negative 30 km per hour okay okay and then it says that at what rate is the distance between the car changing when a is okay uh we'll stop here let's just figure on what is this first okay at what rate is the distance between the car changing okay so now you have two cars you have car a this is car a and this is car b okay so they're interested to know what is the distance between these two cars Okay, so let's just assume that the distance between two, these two cars is actually Z. So let the Z become the distance between car A and car B. Alright, so they ask you to find what? They ask you to find the rate of changing, the rate of changing that is referred to dz dt so your distance of z is always changing okay according to the time okay so now they ask you to find this okay and to be specific when what when the a 
when the car A is uh, when the car A is 0 0.3 km, the car A is 0 0.3 km from the intersection. So this actually x, x is 0 0.3 km, x is 0 0.3 km. And then D is 0 0.4 km from the intersection. D is 0 0.4 km from the intersection. So we have uh, y equal to 0 0.4. So, so the picture is actually help you to visualize your problem. So once you have uh, figured all the important information, so we're going to make use of the, our knowledge that we have learned in the previous lesson. We get the change rule, okay? So okay. So let's look at this one. Okay. So first of all, okay, you have to identify the formula that you're going to use it. Okay. So first, in this questions, uh, we do not mention anything but we say that you have a right angle you have a right angle basically you can visualize we are talking about a right triangle a right triangle okay we are talking about a right triangle and the formula that you can think of uh, regards the right triangle that is hypotenuse. so you are going to use the formula that is uh Regarding the Pythagoras theorem, that is x square plus y square equal to z square, and they ask you to find the z dt. So from here, okay, try to modify your question, your formula into, uh, into this way. So you have x square plus y square, and you have a bracket power one well, to write it in this way, and this is actually will help you to, uh. To build the chain rule, okay. But anyway, okay. Uh, we have to analyze our formula. I uh, appreciate our bit on this. So, okay. If you analyze on this formula, so what happens is, okay, you will have your z. Your z is actually contained of two variable x and y. So you can see that we have variable x, we have variable y. And means that you're going to use a partial differentiation del z del x del z del y. All right, okay. But once you have that, okay, the next thing is look at the component of x. So your component of x, so your component of x is actually consists of a uh, consists of time because it's actually changing according to the time. The distance is actually changing according to the time. So the x has the component t. And same thing happened for the y. Y also have the component t. So this is actually give you the dx dt and dy dt. So you can get from uh, the you can get the tree diagram. The tree diagram will help you to find to find the formula general formula for d z d t okay so before we directly to the uh general formula let's just figure out what is this one first so we are looking for del z del x first so your del z del x is getting from here so you're going to use the chain rule and you're going to treat the y as constant as usual so you have one over two x square plus y square and it's negative one over two okay so differentiate whatever inside the bracket so we have two x and it's actually zero eh? because y is constant so simplify it so you will have x over x square plus y square one over two okay the same thing we're interested to know the del z del y so you look at the del z del y. So we have del z del y. So repeat the same process. Now we're going to treat the x as constant. So you will have um one over two x square y square minus one over two, and you have two y. So simplify it. You will have y over x square plus y square one over two. Okay. According to this uh, this diagram, 
so you are able to write out your chain rule formula so your chain rule formula that is actually uh, d z b t d z b t is actually equal to del z del x multiplied with d uh, d x b t plus with del z del y dot d d y b t okay let's just do the substitution so del del z del x that is the one so we have x multiply with x squared plus y squared 1 over 2 okay how about the our dx dt do we have our dx dt yes we have this on the top so our dx dt that is negative negative 25 so we have to multiply with 20 negative 25 plus del z del y our del z del y that is this one okay del z del y that is um y x square plus y square power one over two okay multiply with dy dt or dy dt is negative 30. okay let's just simplify it so you will have uh negative 25 x and negative 30y on the top on the bottom because you have same numerator you can group them together so we have x square plus y square part of 1 over 2 okay so that is a general dx uh dz dt so we have to be specific okay so you have to look at the information when the x is 0 0.3 and y is 0 0.4 so you have when the x is 0 0.3 and y is 0 0.4 okay let's just look at the specific value of the the exact dt specific value let's do the substitution only right okay so we have 0 0.3 here maybe 30 0 0.4 and then you have uh, 0 0.3 square 0 0.4 square and 102 Okay, so and then on the top, you simplify by using your calculator. On the top, you have 19.5, or at the bottom, we have 0 0.5, and then you will have negative 39. Okay, so don't forget to write the uh, unit. So this one is just how we mentioned is km. So this is km per uh, the time is actually hour per hour, kilometer per hour. So the, uh, this is the answer for the second example.